Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're checking out Synchro Arts Repitch. Repitch is a graphical, vocal, or tuning plugin, or because we're using Studio One, ARA integrated pitch correction tool that we can use. If you're not using a DAW that has ARA integration, don't worry, you can still use this as a plugin and I'm gonna show you the few steps you need to do on your end. I'm also going to show you in this video how to make sure that Studio One sees your Synchro Arts plugins. I had this issue when I was getting ready to film this and I took a couple hours trying to make it work. I had to dive through a bunch of different forum posts, but I got it to work and I've summed it up into about 30 seconds for you guys. It'll take a little bit longer on your machine because of the processes, but really, if you have a problem, it's gonna take three minutes at most to fix the problem. So let's dive into the DAW and we'll mess around with Repitch. Okay, so here we are inside of our session. Our red track here is our lead vocal. This is what we're going to mess around with. We're gonna start off with the non-Studio One users who are interested in repitch. Wherever you put in your plugins, you're just gonna put this first in line because you want your DAW and all of your processing to be accurate to pitched vocals and you don't want to try and do this, if you have saturation and all that other stuff, you want clean vocals going into this. So you want it first in line. So here's repitch. I'm in studio one. I can drag this to the top. Now I know I'm going to get clean vocals into repitch, but we're also not seeing anything and there's no information for it to analyze and to correct. What you need to do is hit this capture button right here and then play your track. Your source material will get captured into the plugin and then you can start manipulating and adjusting however you see fit. So I'll show you real quick. I'll hit capture. Now I'll hit play. I kiss you softly on your way to sleep. Then after it's captured, it will analyze and you're good to go. I only did a short bit here for this demo, but now let's show you the ARA integration. I'm going to remove this plugin because we don't need it. Okay. I have my event selected. I'm going to go up to the audio menu and I'm going to go with edit with repitch. This will turn it into an event effect. And you can see that on the inspector down here and there's no capturing needed because we're using ARA. It's able to analyze the entire performance nearly instantaneously and give us everything we need so that we can start adjusting our vocals. Okay. So after it analyzes everything, this is what we're looking at. And it probably looks similar to other graphical tuning plugins or ARA integrated tuners that we've seen before, but there are some differences within repitch. There's a lot of controls in this and we're not going to go into all of them, but we're going to go into the important ones. Top left shows you the suggested key. Here's your main tools up on top here, and there are shortcuts for them. So the selector tool, which is the main tool, is Q. This is the centering tool, center notes tool. This is C. There's the draw tool, which is D. The split tool, which is S. And the warp point tool, which is W. And the pan and zoom display, which is X. You don't necessarily need to use the pan and zoom display or the X key because there are some keyboard shortcuts. And I wanna give a huge shout out to Marcus who actually did the video for Synchro Arts that showed me that you can do control and shift on a PC or command and shift on a Mac and you can navigate where you are in your tracks this way or you can do control and alt on a PC or command and option on a Mac to be able to adjust the sizes of everything. I was also using those modifiers in conjunction with my mouse, click and hold to be able to do those things. So on a PC, control shift and move the mouse around to navigate and then control alt on PC, click and move the mouse around to change the sizes of things, the vertical scale or the horizontal scale. And on Mac, that would be command instead of control and option instead of alt. Shift is obviously the same. Okay, so after you've figured out all of the keyboard shortcuts and how to navigate around, you're probably wondering how do we actually tune these things? Well, the easiest things to do is to come up to this menu right here. This is called the macro presets. There's a drop down, and in here, you can go in and 
find some of the pre-made macros. So something like this, snap all note centers 100%. This will take every single note that has been captured inside of Repitch and wherever it thinks that the note wants to go, it's gonna snap it to perfect centered pitch there. It's gonna leave your vibratos and your drifts through your notes, but the main point of the note, where the center of that note is supposed to be, is definitely going to be tuned into whatever note Repitch thinks is trying to go for. So right now I'm in manual editing so I can come into any single note and just grab it and start sliding it up or down. Let's say you didn't want to go with something like vocal snap all to 100%. You could hit this button right here and make your own setting. So maybe you wanna do your lead vocals, but you just wanna go with 75% or something close to it. But you could also go in here and start with a baseline. So instead of it being 100%, maybe I just want it to be 85%, or I want it to be 50%, I want it to be 25%. I can go ahead and save as user macro, and then it will show up in that drop-down menu underneath user. I've went back to manual editing so that you guys can hear what's going on. And now let's get into some cool things that we can do in here. Yes, you can pitch correct like you would with any other pitch correction tool out there, but really where things come in and make this a little bit different is the draw tool. This is D on your keyboard. So you see this note that I have selected here. There's this weird bit in the center where she kind of just goes off. I want to smooth this out and kind of rein it in and keep it close so that the vibrato is closer to the other sections of just this vocal right here. So watch this. I zoomed in on this note just to make it easier and I used those same keyboard shortcuts before. So we have this big jump here. I'm gonna take my draw tool and just start clicking and dragging and bringing this closer to what I think the performance should have been. It's still there and maybe my arc is slightly different, but now the note isn't drifting nearly as far. If you want things to be dead on and just squared off on the note, just draw a straight line. And you'll notice that because we're using ARA, it's gonna do some analysis and it's actually going to shift the note because now you're saying, well, I don't want any drift on this note. I want it to be centered. And then we can lock it to center. So we can go back to the selector tool and we can just double click and it'll snap it straight to center. Now you'll notice that there's this blue box. This designates a, a toned note. If you ever see anything green, like down here, this is like your S's or anything that doesn't have any like pitch information. Now check this out. If I come to the left-hand side, I can adjust the length of this note. Maybe I want it shorter, maybe I want it longer, but we can do that in other editors. What you can really do is on the left-hand side, when we're just gonna undo to give our shape back real quick. Here's where things get really cool with repitch. We're still looking at this note and we hit undo a couple times just to give us back to the original note. Now you may notice there's a lot of drift happening on this note, but towards the back end of the note, it falls a little flat, it goes down. Maybe I wanna tilt this note. I can come to the right hand side and you'll see that there's these little nodes here. There's a block on the left side, the right side, the top, and in the center. If I'm drifting flat at the end of the note, I can come to the end here on the right side. I can hold down Control on PC or Command on Mac, and this is going to lock the other side into its position. What I can do is I can click on the right hand node here, and you'll notice on the left side, there's like this circle. So. If I try to go up or down, nothing's really gonna happen. I can go left or right and adjust the length of the note, but if I hold down control on a PC or command on Mac, after I'm still holding with my mouse, it's going to lock in the left-hand side, and now I can tilt this note so that the drifts relatively stay to note center. This is amazing. And you can see the old pitch line, which is the line that we're looking at, originally came all the way down here and we've adjusted the tilt of the notes so that at the end it doesn't go flat, it stays closer to being in pitch. 
It still has the drift. It still has the vibrato to give it some life, but we just made sure that it's closer to center and in pitch. Now you're probably wondering, well, if that's what the left and right nodes do, what does the top one do? The top one allows you to increase or decrease that drift that we were just talking about. So if I click and hold on this and I increase, you can see that vibrato is just accentuated. It's crazy now, but maybe I don't want that. I want it to be just a flat note. I'm going to hit undo in the top right, grab the same node and go down this time. I can bring this note to nearly perfect. And if I keep going, I can inverse the drift so that it goes in the opposite direction. Instead of it going flat to sharp, now it's going sharp to flat. And you don't have to do this note by note. You can do this through a lot of different notes. Let's zoom out a little again. And I'm just going to grab this section here. And you can lasso things. So I can just click anywhere and create a hoop like this. Now I have a bunch of notes selected. And within these notes, you'll see this block. And I can do the same thing. I can grab from here and I can increase the drift on all of these notes. Now, because I'm doing all of them, they're all going relative. So some of the notes are changing a lot. We don't really need to do that. But here is another cool thing. We can preview just these notes by hitting the slash key, which is also the question mark key on your keyboard. And we can preview just this section without playing the whole song. Away. So if I only had one note selected and I hit the slash key, oh. I'm just going to preview that one note. But if we hit spacebar, then we'll navigate to wherever we are within our session and go from there. And you'll see that repitch dynamically changes the window to show us what notes we're looking at. From so many miles away I tuck you in so you feel safe and warm Far So you saw, not only did it follow the playhead, but as the notes went higher and we weren't looking at that register, it scrolled it for us. Maybe you don't want to do this, though. On the top right hand side is the screen lock button. It's also E on your keyboard. Hitting this will make it red and engage lock. So even if you hit spacebar from so wherever you were and wherever you are are two different things. You can see in my session, my playhead is close to the beginning. And even though I'm looking at seconds as my time base here, which we can change in our settings, and I'm going to do that real quick. We're looking at bar 28, but we know that the playhead is just before bar 17. Then once you're done, you're done. There's nothing you have to do except do whatever kind of processing you need to do. But to save yourself on some extra CPU, if you really need to, you can always render this because we're using ARA. So in the inspector under event effects, if this was collapsed, you would see this orange button. You can hit render, it'll commit those changes, but within Studio One, you can always revert back if something was amiss, maybe something got messed up or you missed a note. You can always go back, fix it, and then dive right back into a new render and continue processing from there. All right, here is how to make sure that your version of Studio One, if you're using Studio One, can find your Synchro Arts plugins. Because I had this problem and I don't want you guys to have this. What you want to do is one, make sure you have the most recent version of everything. Most recent version of your version of Studio One. It could be Studio One 5, it could be Studio One 6, but you want to make sure that it is at the most updated version that is available. Next, what you want to do is make sure that not only have you installed the plugin, I hope you have, but that you've also activated it through the iLock license manager. Once it's activated on your machine, Studio One should recognize it, but if it doesn't, there is one more thing that you need to do and it's very easy. Open up Studio One and then go to View, Plugin Manager, and then you want this button right here, Remove Plugin Settings. Hitting this, there will be a process that happens, it's very quick, and it says, hey, 
I need to reboot. Studio One is going to have to restart, but it's going to dump all of its settings, not any of your saved presets or anything like that, just some settings, some stuff in the back end that you never touch anyway. It's going to dump all of that, rescan on the next boot up, and let it do a full scan. Then you should find Vocaline underneath audio and repitch, anything from Synchro Arts, not just Vocaline. But you can see I have Vocaline and I have repitch now available to me in the audio drop down menu. So there you go. That is repitch from Synchro Arts. This was a very quick overview. This thing is a extremely powerful and there's more to it than we went through in this video but I like keeping these videos short for you guys and just give you a taste of what they can do because what I do here isn't necessarily what you're going to do inside your session because you're working in a completely different session. If you want to pick up your own copy of Synchro Arts Repitch use the link down in the description. That's all for now. If you found anything informative please like and share the video. To join the community click the Discord link down in the description. If you want your songs mixed by me, check out timplansbomb.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.